All right, welcome to part two of ARM-based ASR, in other words, Azure Resource Manager-based Azure Site Recovery. Uh, we're looking here at the new uh, Azure portal. It's got the words MS ahead of it. Uh, and you can see here, I've got the uh, virtual machines uh, displayed here, the same virtual machines in which we set up in part one, and we left it at the end where they were replicating and they were syncing at 0%. Now, this is uh, the next day, I've left it overnight, and as you can see here, I've hit refresh, and it loads the virtual machines and they're both saying protected. So it means the replication is, uh, is caught up, it's up to date. My domain controller and my sync server, my AD Connect server here, uh, are all up to date. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a unplanned failover. And what I've done as well, I've added in a new uh, network, a virtual network as a target. So what I've done, I've gone into getting started here under site recovery. I've gone into replicate application here um, I've gone through to the few steps down here underneath target and I've changed the target uh, virtual network to a virtual network that is not connected to the on-premises environment via a VPN tunnel. It's a separate virtual network isolated all by itself. Uh, but the difference is it's got exactly the same IP address subnet as the on-premises environment. So I'm on one of the servers now on-premises. So let's log into it. Let's log into the domain controller and I'll just quickly show you the IP address of this server. And this is one of the ones that is being replicated currently at the moment. So I'll open up command prompt. Okay, IP configuration of this server is 192.168.111.2. It's only um, a class C subnet. There's only 254 or whatever addresses available to it. It's a slash 24 subnet. So it's quite a straightforward subnet. And I've replicated that in Azure. If I go back to the process server and have a look at the portal, I've, I've set up a virtual network for the purposes of failing over the virtual machines to a subnet that has exactly the, the same IP address scheme. Um, so I'll close out of this, I'll go back and I'll go over to replicated items down here under protected items and I can see the service here. So if I go into each one and go to settings, computer and network, yesterday when I had a look it didn't actually have this uh, information here but now it does. Uh, it's got target network here, I'm going to change this to the one that I set up before which is the simulation of the on-premises environment that is not connected by a VPN. I've done that too for the reason uh, being uh, I don't want an IP address conflict across the tunnel. So I've done that one. So I'm going to close out of this and I'll make the same change to the other server as well. Settings, computer and network and change the target network to the one that I want, the new one that I created. It doesn't have the gateway, the VPN gateway attached to it. Okay, so that's done. Right, what we're gonna do now is a unplanned failover. So if I go to the DC and do that one first, click on unplanned failover. Latest point in time. Yes, if I drop that down, is there anything else here? No, there's not. Um, and there's an option here to shut down the machine before beginning failover. Um, so I can either I can do that or I can leave that up. I might leave that on for the reason is because it's only going to be a uh, more of like a test failover more so. There is a test fail a failover option here, but it doesn't actually do it 100%. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a real unplanned failover of the domain controller right now. Um, it's got all the uh, basic settings in here. I'll leave it powered on. Click OK go through and let that do its thing. And if we have a look at the unplanned failover job, we can see the steps it's working through. What I'll do, I'll pause the video and I'll come back once it's done and I'll show you the finished result. All right, and we're back. Now the uh, failover has finished. Uh, all the steps were successful. It's gone through a few test stages, uh, latest change synchronization, 
uh, and all that sort of jazz. Now, if we flick across to resource groups and have a look what we've uh, what we can see, we can see it's created a new resource group with the name of the server in which we failed over. So if we click on that resource group, in here we can see two resources. We can see a compute resource and a NIC resource. Now, if we click on the compute resource, you'll notice that it expands out to the other blade with a configuration of a server, which was pretty much the same as what we had on premises. So it's a pretty good match. Um, the connect option is uh, grayed out. We can come back to that in a second. If we have a look under disks, it'll have the same amount of disks that we had before, same OS disks and same data disks. And, um, if we go to have a look at the uh, network interface, uh, and we go out of here, you can see it's uh, added it to the virtual network, which we created the iso isolated virtual network. It's got the same uh, subnet that it had before. However, it's a different IP address to before, uh, which is not a, a great, uh, a massive problem. We can uh, we can sort that out. Now, if we go back and, and, and work out why we can't connect, the reason is because it's it's restored the virtual machine, it's brought it up, it's got a nick, but it doesn't have a public IP address. And so what we'll do, we'll just click on the resources here and add in the public IP address and we should be able to connect to it then. And we find the public IP address. Yes, create. And it should automatically by default put it in the same resource group uh, which we had before, which it didn't, but that's okay. We can select it DC01. Uh, give it a name, pip01, that'll do. Uh, IP address, make it dynamic, that's fine. DNS label, this is for outside. This does have to be unique. I wonder if this has been taken. Nope, okay, great. So we can use that, go create. All right, that's done. The pip has been created and the pip has been put into our resource group, DC01. We can see it there. There it is there. So the next thing we need to do is associate that pip with this NIC. Now to do that, we click on the NIC, go out of here to IP addresses, over to public IP address settings. We're going to enable that. And here it's going to allow us to choose a public IP address. We'll select the one which we just created. We'll click on save and that's done. So it saved the settings that's attached the pip to the NIC. So if we go back out of here, uh, back to the DC, the, the virtual machine, you can see there's a connect, shop, connect option here now. So if we click on connect, it's going to open up for us. Uh, actually it won't, it'll download the remote desktop connection and it's gonna allow us to log in to the server. So what we need to do is log in with the domain credentials credentials that we uh, that we know that exists on this server because remember too it's a domain controller it's come across on a different network. All right, so we log in. Yes. And we are straight through into the domain controller which is sitting in Azure on our isolated virtual network. Yes, it's got a shutdown event tracker here. It didn't shut down successfully. Uh, what we can do, we can open up Active Directory, Active Directory users and computers, and we can have a look at uh, the directory. We can see that everything is still intact. So there we go. We've just failed over a machine on premises into um, Active, uh, sorry, into Azure using Azure Site Recovery. Uh, we've brought it online into an isolated virtual network using the same address space as we had configured on premises and uh and and that's it it's up and running all right let's go back to the azure portal and have a look at the replicated items as part of our uh, site recovery and we can see here the two uh, servers here the one that we just failed over before uh, has got here, it's saying completed, but the other one here, the sync server is saying it's still protected. Uh, so what we can do for that one, we can go through and have a look at the settings and uh, and see under computer and network what our options are. So 
as we did with the domain controller, we failed over to the recovery virtual network we created, which is the isolated virtual network that doesn't have a, a VPN gateway or a VPN tunnel to on-premises, has the same exact, exact address space as what we uh, had on-premises. And we, you can see here too, it's got uh, uh, an option for default subnet, which is, which is fine because it's only got one, but also too here, there's an option to specify a specific IP address, or if you leave it blank, it's done by DHCP, which it did before. Now, what if you wanted to communicate with this virtual server after the failover through the tunnel without going through the motions of adding the pip like we did before and associating the pip with the nick well you can do that uh, simply by selecting the other virtual network which we know uh, is connected by the tunnel the vpn gateway through to on-premises and here you can set a like a, a, a subnet that you want to uh, select and uh, and here where it's got uh, target ip you do have the option to create um, to specify a specific static IP address, or you can just leave that blank and it'll uh, automatically assign one uh, itself. So we're, with the DC, we could have done that option, but we chose to uh, chose to um, to fail over to a specific virtual network to keep the address space exactly the same. So there's two options there when you fail over. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thanks for watching.